So I'm making this video on how to make English paper piece hexes or just hexy flowers for our quilters patch so along and I'm just going to do it in a side video so that it can be shared with everybody or anyone else that might want to use this technique. There are numerous ways that you can make your hexagon units. And the first thing I want to show you is that I tend to store all of my English paper piecing projects in these type of containers because then I can sort into each one particular sections or particular stages of the project if I want to or I can just store them where I have them in different sizes which is what I have here. Because I will just make these and I don't have a project that I will use them with and then I will just come in here and pull them when I need them. So in here I have some that I have been working on that I've been doing by hand. And the way that I was doing this one is from templates that were traced onto cardstock. And you can put a hole in the center with a punch and then you can just pin it that way or when you pin it to the fabric you can just go ahead and stick a pin in it that way to hold it in place temporarily. And the threads that I like to use, I like to use quilting thread because it's stronger so when I pull it doesn't break. But you can use just regular sewing thread as well. As a backup I will use this. So I just have one in there in case I run out. I also keep a little pair of scissors in here and then I have a needle threader as well and these little pieces I was collecting when I went to quilt shows they would give these out for free a lot of times and they're by paper pieces and they already had them all cut out for you in the pack so I keep these paper pieces and recycle them into other projects. And then I also have a little needle organizer but what I use it for sometimes is I'll pre-thread my needles and then I'll just put them in here to hold them. There is a clover tool that you can, that rotary winds your threads in. I also recommend that. It's just not in this particular one. I'll just pop a picture up here so you can see it. And then in the bottom, you can also buy pieces that are made of mylar. So this is by Brandy. Let me. And they're just 50 of the mylar pieces. And these are one inch size. And then again, I have some more one inch size, but these are in the paper and they're by the Paper Pieces Company again. And then I just stick in the fabric for the particular size. If I got too many sizes in a container, then I'll start to bag some of the pieces together so that I know they all stay together in the bag. So these pieces here was a template that was used to cut this and then they go back onto these smaller sizes here so I just tend to keep everything that's alike in the containers and I'm not working on any particular size I'm just working on whatever piece and then one year my quilt gill we did one as well and this was the size we used so I had two of those packages so I just stuck those down in the bottom now these larger hexagons were cut with my AccuQuilt Gold Dye and let me show you that. So on this die you can cut 
up to six layers and I just cut my fabrics out of here and it just saved me time from having to use any of the templates or just cutting squares if I didn't already have squares that were approximately that size. When I'm using the squares, I just go to my square container and just pull out a square that will fit the paper piecing template. This is just a faster way of doing it. And this is the gold dye hexagon 2 inch, 3 inch, and 5 inch. And the number is 55011 from AccuQuilt.com so next I guess I need to show you how to sew these so again I already have one here that's pinned to a background so I'll just demonstrate on that even though it's not going to be in my quilt top and so you can see here where I have approximate size squares that I've just pulled from my stash I did not go and cut an actual hexagon so I'm just going to move my thread to the side because I already have a needle thread and I have a knot in the end as well and so you basically want to pull down your fabric and You're basically are going to just tack this down, but you want to make sure that you've got the fabric onto the edges very well. You don't want to have it loose and not fold it down where the actual fabric is touching the cardboard or your Mylar template edge, your cardstock or whatever surface you're using. And so I will do that all the way around the piece. Okay, so you'll end up with something that looks like that. And at this point, I can just cut my thread. I don't have to necessarily put a knot in here because it's not going to go anywhere. And if it should get loose, all I have to do is just pull the thread a little more. And it will come right back to, to its position. So I just cut the thread there. And on this one, you can see where I have just the thread tail hanging, and it's not a knot right here. But I do put a knot at the beginning so that it doesn't pull through. So I will go to this brown one here because I have all six of my pieces made. And then on this particular ones that I'm making. I'm actually using some form of a yellow color in the center. So I just want to pull a yellow out. And when this is sewn together, it's going to actually go together like such. When I'm actually sewing, I'm going to go ahead and use this thread to sew my units together. So I use the quilting thread to base my hexagons to the paper but I want to use regular sewing thread when it's time to sew my pieces together 
So I have my thread here and I have it knotted. And the reason why I like using the R fill thread when I'm doing hexagon piecing is because it's thinner. And so when I start doing my stitching, it won't show as much. So basically I want to sew all of these units together to the center. So I'm just going to flip one of my pieces down onto the yellow. And then I'm going to go up under so that I can come out right on the fold. And that way I'm actually hiding my knot. And then I want to put these two edges right together and we're actually just going to whip stitch these two pieces together. And I like to do a few stitches in my corner so that I know that they're going to stay nice and tight there. And then you can work your way down. Some people like to stitch a couple of stitches away from their corner and then back up and then come back forward. And so I will keep doing this and when I get to the corner, I will come back. Okay, I am back and I have this whole line sewed down and I did a double stitch again at the corner so that I can keep my corners nice and tight. And when I flip it up, I have something that looks like this. So when I put this back in the middle, I now know that I have my thread here and it's actually down and what I want to do is actually go up inside so that I can just sew this L so I should have sewn back the other way sometimes I forget to do that so let me just put my thread in and just travel along the inside back down to the upper corner Okay, so what I did was I ran my thread back to the corner so when I connect this piece, I can just sew it in an L. So I will start at this corner, and then when I get through with this side, I can flip it and then go and sew this other side. And I am just using one thickness of thread on this. And so I will sew this all the way down and then I will show it to you before I flip it. Okay, so I have sewn with whip stitch all the way down. And then I want to open this up and then fold it so that I can continue along the yellow. And you will have to bend this one a little to do so. And then I like to make sure that I really get those corners tightened up so it won't be a hole there. And when I'm actually doing my whip stitching, I'm just going through the top two or three threads of fabric. I'm not going through the cardboard because we want to be able to pull it out later. So I will continue sewing this and we will come back. So here we are now and we have this side and an L connected. And you will just keep repeating this process. I'll snake my thread back up to the top here and add this next one on. When I finish sewing that, I snake my thread back up to the top and add that one on. So I'm just going to end the video here because it's just repetitive 
stitching until you get all the way around and you end up with one that is completely sewn all the way around. If you notice in the center you don't see any basting anymore and that's because I've pulled that particular one out. Once you have sewn around all six sides of your hexagon you can then pull that paper out and recycle the template to use in another one but as long as you have something that needs to be connected you should not pull out your stitches until it's connected to the next piece so all of these here only have the paper pulled out of the centers and the rest of these are indeed still fill with paper so that they can be sewn to whatever or however I plan to use these which I don't have a project for these I'm just actually making them and when I actually put these pieces together they will not be English paper piece they will actually be put together in a quilt where they'll be connected like so and then let me just show you how it's going to look and I was actually cutting out like I spy pieces and so if I was doing a, a whole quilt with these I would just be sewing these but when I sew these units together these are actually going to be set in seam so when I actually put right sides together I will start and stop one quarter of an inch in from each corner so that when that's connected I can then go back and set in the next pieces because you can't sew clear across when you sew hexagons together that way and there's other ways of sewing hexagons so that you don't have to sew set in seams but that's a whole nother topic as well as this being a whole nother topic so if I ever sew these together then I will do a video on that as well so that's it for this video I will see you next time bye bye